All right, without further ado, we are going to get on with our show and introduce our first comedian. He is a partner at Werner Perling & Company, PC. And his comedy career, he claims, really kicked in when he took on the role of president of the Georgia Society of CPAs. This guy says he loves UGA and Seinfeld. So please give a big hand to the true master of his domain, Mr. Mike Werner. Thank you, Tommy. How y'all doing tonight? Is this the AA meeting? Accountants Anonymous? Yes, I am an accountant. I started years ago before the dangers of accountancy were known. Even as a kid, I knew I wanted to grow up to be in a profession where I could help people. Either that or a Viking, because, hey, you gotta, you got to admit, those helmets with horns are pretty cool. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, Mom. Uh, I got a few rants and raves today I get off my chest. I hope you don't mind. The first one is banks. Now, a while back, I, draw, I uh, bounced a $3 check at Wachovia, and they charged me $30. Now, if I don't have $3 in my account, I sure as heck don't have $30. It must take a long time to process a $3 check to justify that fee. I can see the teller now. It's the end of the day. She's getting ready to go home. She's getting all her stuff together, and in comes somebody with a $3 check. Damn, I'll be here till midnight now. But you may ask, how could a successful, intelligent CPA such as myself bounce a $3 check? And that's a good question. But years ago, I had a gambling problem. It got to be so bad, I had to declare bankruptcy. So I go to my attorney. He says, that'll be $1,250. I said, well, if I had $1,250, I wouldn't have to declare bankruptcy. I would be at a gaming table somewhere saying, I sure do hope I don't lose this $1,250 because if I do, I'll have to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> but he was just a kid, that attorney. And you know, kids today, with the advent of the computer, they don't think. They don't have to think and they don't think. I went to the grocery store the other day. I got a few items. I go up to the cashier. The young lady behind the counter rings me up. She says, it's $14.68. So I hand her a 20 she puts it in the machine. I say, wait a minute, I've got 13 cents. Oh, well, you would have thought that I had asked her the million dollar question, well, who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> uh, I think I need a lifeline. <laughs> I want to call a friend. Manager, manager to register three, please. But those kids, they have it soft today. You know, when I was growing up, you had to actually touch the television to turn it on. You did. And half the time, you had to use a pair of pliers to change the channel. <laughs> yeah, you did. Absolutely. Yes, you did. But there's one thing that really does bother me, probably a lot more than it should. How much urine are you supposed to put in that cup to constitute the proper amount for a urine sample? Nobody tells you. There should be a line on the cup. Well, that's too much. If I go out there with this, they're going to laugh at me. I'll put something back. Uh-oh. That's not enough. Now I've got to top it off. But I do have one virtue in life, and that's cars. I love cars. I remember growing up, learning how to drive on my dad's lap. Did any of you guys do that? Yeah. He would work the pedals, and I worked the steering wheel. Then I went down to get my driver's test, and I sat on the examiner. <laughs> well, I flunked the test, but he still writes me. <laughs> I was in the uh, showroom the other day. A salesman comes up to me. He says... If you buy a car today, you'll not make a payment for a year. My jaw dropped. I never bought a car from you before. How'd you know that? <laughs> Cars today, they come with all these options. You take that passenger side airbag. Did you know if that thing deploys, it costs over $500 to put it back together? Now, it also comes with an on-off switch. So basically, you can decide if that person right next to you is worth the $500 or not. 
Hello, honey, I just had a terrible accident. No, no, I'm okay, but uh, your mom's messed up. (laughs) Something about the airbag not deploying. But I saw these cars that work on all these audio options. You say CD on, the CD player came on. Windshield wipers on, the windshield wipers came on. Now I give my car commands two. Check engine light, off. Doesn't do a damn thing. Doesn't do any good at all. I, was, I rented a car one time in Tunica, Mississippi. Yeah, I was gambling. Yeah, I was. And it came with this GPS system. Now it had this woman's voice. They would say, turn left, next light. Now, this voice was so sexy, it had palms of my hands sweating. It started taking on a life of its own. I could hear it telling me, I like the way you hold the wheel, handsome. (laughs) That was one heck of a right-hand turn, big boy. (laughs) Ooh, you know how to use that shift knob, big sweet thing. Needless to say, I didn't want to turn that car in, but I had to. So I go home, and I tell my then-girlfriend about this GPS system and how much I enjoyed it. So she runs out and buys me one for my birthday. I am excited. I can't wait to put it in the car. Unfortunately, she got me the drill sergeant model. <laughs> turn left, next light, pencil neck. You missed that turn, pea brain. Drop down and give me 20 So I had to sit there and listen to that all the time. Boy, now I've got something else to say and I forgot what it was. (laughs) You know, I finally married that girl. Uh, Marriage should come with a handbook. It's like joining the army. You get a new uniform, you get a new haircut, and information comes to you on a need-to-know basis only. (laughs) Yeah, she moved in and a lot of my stuff didn't make it through the merger. It was a hostile takeover. (laughs) I felt like that flood victim you see on the evening news. It all happened so fast. Whoosh, all gone. But you learn a lot when you get married. Did you know that pictures are supposed to be in frames? Yeah, I would take mine and just tape them up on the wall. That's wrong. But we get along. We play this new game. It's called, Does This Belong Here? It's fun. The game starts right before I'm getting ready to fall asleep. Yeah. She'll walk in. Does this belong here? Now, there's something about a guy resting that drives a woman crazy. They can't stand to see a guy get ready to fall asleep. The most bizarre things come out of their mouths. Good night, honey. Do you think we were together in a prior life? (laughs) Oh, yeah. And I must have died from sleep deprivation. (laughs) Do you feel that we're soulmates? Oh, yeah, right now I feel like we're cellmates. I turn out that light. (laughs) Now, women are more vocal than men. Whenever you see an elderly couple together, it's always the men who have the hearing aids. Yeah. It's true. Yep. But you know, my wife is a great cook. I woke up the other morning to the smell of coffee, bacon, grizz- bacon, bacon in the griddle, and pancakes being made. Then I looked around and I realized, damn, I passed out at Denny's again. <laughs> but you know, marriage is tough. Even Nelson Mandela got a divorce. He's in an African prison for 27 years, tortured every day. He's in this rat-infested cell, 135 degrees. He gets out, goes home to his wife after six months. He says, I can't stand it anymore. I'm out of here. And quickly, just I saw this on the news yesterday. I thought it was kind of funny. They had this uh, man in South uh, Florida who had a 30-foot python living underneath his house, and he didn't know it. Now, how do you have a 30-foot python living underneath your house and not know it? One clue may be, honey, 
Have you seen the dog? Honey? I'm out of here. Thank you. I can see clearly now the rain is gone.